Welcome to another episode of the the Young Guides podcast. My name is Keaton. I'm Kyle. And let's get this thing started. Let's start spitting knowledge. So we got uh, you guys, the first episode is kind of a background on why we wanted to start the podcast. Brief, brief introduction about us. Um, So the next couple episodes, we're going to go into a background about each of us, both Keaton and I. In the start, we're going to be interviewing Keaton on his guide experience. We're going to interview him on his outdoor experience and ultimately uh, his inspiration while we started the podcast. And uh, Keaton, take it away. All right. um, So let me just start out with a little background about myself. Um, I grew up in a small uh, suburban town outside of uh, Seattle. Um, not ideal for what you're thinking, like uh, hunting and fishing haven. Um, I think it's like, you know, you look at Seattle, you look at big buildings, big cities. Um, you know, I didn't get the privilege of uh, getting out and, uh, and, you know, I didn't have uh, 40 acres off my back door like a lot of people do. Um one thing, you know, when I was young, I'd go out to fishing season uh, at my lake and uh, I was like two years old, three years old, they would get me out fishing and I would, I like, if you looked at me back then, you'd be like, I don't know how that turned to this. You know, I, I had uh, my rain gear on. I was out there. I was like two. And I was like, dude, it's raining. I'm done with this. Like I, I'd go fish for a little bit and then I'd be like, I'm, I'm out. I'm going to go sit and play with my trucks inside or something, you know? Um, but as the, as the time went on and I got a little bit older and, um, one of the things that really got my gears grinding on fishing and hunting was, uh, my, my grandpa lived out at the property that we have and uh, I'd go over and I'd visit with him and he put on the hunting channel and, you know, the first couple of years I was like, Oh, this, you know, this is kind of interesting. And I, I'd sit there and I'd watch the hunting channel. And then about, you know, when I turned seven, eight, nine, I was like, I, I kind of want to go try this. And, uh, so, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm like, ah, oh, grandpa, you think I could do this? And he's like, yeah, just, you got to sign up for Hunter's Ed and stuff. And so I get home and I'm like, dad, you know, I'm sitting there with my dad. I'm like, Hey, I want to start hunting. And my dad's like, all right, well, if you sign up for Hunter's Ed, I'll drive you every day. And I don't think my dad realized like how serious I was about it. Um, and, and, uh, I got on the computer like 10 minutes later, I came back to him. I was like, here you go. It's in Issaquah. You gotta, gotta drive me to Issaquah every day, you know, for a couple weeks and I gotta do this. And so he took me and he'd drive me to Issaquah and I'd go in and I'd sit by myself and, um, you know, he came in with the first one, but after that, he would drop me off. I'd go in, I'd do my hunter's ed. And at the end of it, you know, a couple of weeks went by and I was a licensed hunter. And so, uh, fishing and hunting, you know, it's not like, it's not, you know, it's not like I was two, three dragging deers out and just, it's just, it came to me a little later in life on my hunting side. Um, and then fishing, same with it. I just picked up fishing and I just, once I kind of hit high school, I was just like, that's all I did. I played football and I was fishing. So, um, but yeah, I just, I love the outdoors now. Um, and like I was saying before, you, you know, from where I was to where I am, I'm a, I mean, I'm just engulfed in this, uh, in this fishing world and the outdoor world and conservation. And I mean, anything that has fishing, helping fish, benefiting wildlife, outdoor hunting, fishing, I'm, I want to be about it. So, uh, some part of that for sure so tell me about how you got started guiding yeah so um little story uh <laughs> and uh, our good friend keegan um in college i you know i grew up you know throwing power bait uh a lot of people purists kind of frown upon that but uh you know that's how yeah, i got whoever started. catches fish i'm not yeah. i'm not gonna discriminate I mean, I still throw, I still like gear fishing here and there, especially for like salmon and stuff. But, uh, so back on track, I, you know, I'm, I got, uh, I started out gear fishing and throwing for salmon, trout, all that. And then I got into college and I ran into Keegan, our good friend. And, uh, 
you know, we were, it was college orientation. I'm like, just, I was like kind of in my shell, like in high school. And then in college, I was like, man, I'm just going to make new friends. I'm just going to go up and, and uh, here's a little life lesson besides fishing and hunting go and talk to people. Like if you're going to college or you're going to, you're working at a new place, just talk, go up to people, say hi. You know, you only live once. You could die the next day. You never know. Just go do it. Um, so I go up and I start talking to uh, Keegan's friends that went to high school with them. I was like, yeah, you guys like to fish and hunt. And they're like, oh no, we don't, but Keegan does. And so they introduced me to Keegan. Me and Keegan kicked it off. And uh, he's like, man, you got to sit down that gear rod. We got to get you on a flyer. <laughs> you know and so you know four or five years ago i'm out there at you know in central one of the probably one of the fly fishing havens of washington and i didn't know what i was doing and just like everyone else you start somewhere and i'm whipping that rod back and forth and it's cracking like a whip and um eventually over time i just i just started teaching myself and i started learning asking questions i'm big on like asking questions to anyone and everyone new old you know everyone's got something to give to you um so that's just how i picked it up and then uh you know here and there i, st I bought keegan's old boat I, I rebuilt it and now i'm like yeah i want a guide I, I love it um and then who uh, Kyle used to work for Ellensburg Angler. They gave me a shot and uh, I'm very thankful they did. I'm, I'm asking questions as much as I can, taking out some awesome people. And I'm learning a lot from them. They're learning a lot. I hope for me, um, I've got, I got to take out kids. I got to take out adults. I mean, all the whole spectrum. I just like every bit of it. I mean, every day I'm out there in an office and I'm not behind a desk and a computer. I'm watching wild turkeys fight. I'm watching deer out there run, you know, it's just like elk, anything. You see everything. So I just love it. Um, but yeah, I, that's how I started getting into guiding. Heck yeah. How long had you been fly fishing when I first met you in Keegan at um, that night? <laughs> oh, man, that was probably like, I bet we i mean what was that that was like 2017 october i would probably say i only had maybe two to three weeks under my belt really um, yeah you you know you know it showed too like all you guys are out there kyle uh just hooks his hog you know out on the yak and i'm like i'm sitting there just trying to get anything i didn't even know what a mend was uh, <laughs> and you, know, you still I, don't right yeah i'm still figuring it out you know so um yeah two to three weeks I, I mean i was brand new to fly fishing when we went out and um yeah those were the good times though i still think about like when i pass those places i think about i'm like i'll tell the story i'm you know that was one of the highlights is i was like man my friend kyle he hooked a big fish right under that bank i was like i was only fishing for like a week it was it was a nightmare but you know i'm glad people <laughs> get it done so for sure. I, I'm, I'm going back right now. I'm looking through my, my Instagram looking for when that was, cause that was, that, that was, was a memorable fun. moment. That was, that's what solidified my relationship with both you and Keegan. Cause that's the first time I met either one of you guys. Yeah. Buddy uh, Jesse had his connection. Well, okay. Let's go back. Let's go back. Okay. You were part of the fly fishing club at that point, right? Was the fly fishing club a thing at that point? I guess, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I guess it was like, it's got to pop up on my memory soon. I think it was like November. So maybe I had a few more weeks. I was like, I was, I mean, it was like a month, but uh, uh, yeah, me and Keegan, we started the fly fishing club there at Central um, and we were getting that kicked off. And I know a guy that's fly fished for like a month, you know, starting a fly fishing club is pretty crazy, but I like once I started doing it, I was one of the guys that just like engulfed myself in it. You know, I just loved it. Um, but yeah, that, those memories, you know, the winter fishing, the, the, you know, we were going out from like dust to dark fishing in the cold, the fall fishing. I mean, those memories, you just don't forget with your buddies. Um, I mean, I still think about them. Like I said, every time I go past certain spots, I'm like, oh, that's where me and Josh fish or me and Kyle or me and Keegan. So, yeah, for sure. And I think that show tells it a lot about you. Like, I don't know a lot about it, 
but I'm going to help start this club so I can meet new people. And then you're going to learn yourself, you know, like you're, that, that shows a lot on your part on, on how, you, so how friendly social you are, how much you want to learn. Right. Absolutely. And I think that's, um, you're not just in fly fishing, but in, you know, like again, another little life lesson is just like, just get to know people get to try and stuff, do things. You never know where, you know, if you asked me in 2017 in the dorm, if I ever thought I'd become a fly fishing guide, I'd probably laugh at you. I'd be like, I can't even, I don't even know how to cast. How am I going to teach someone to cast, you know, but I just stuck at it and I learned from you. I learned from Keegan. I learned from Todd. I learned from, you know, Stefan, all of you. Anytime I get out fishing, I try to ask a question and I try to sit on guide trips and um, yeah, I mean, just, I just, you got to get after it if you want to do something. For sure. And I'm actually, we need it. Um, I, I found it. I found the picture. November 19th, 2016. So a whole, a whole year earlier, 2016, like the year we graduated high school. We're just babies. Dude, we were babies back then. We didn't know what we're, we didn't know we're, what we're, well, I didn't know what I was doing, but we're just, I was like the start of a start of our little adult lives. So. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. The Yakima has just been like, that's been like the, the the start i guess of our careers you know yeah you know and i think from there learning like all the different types of fisheries and stuff it's just uh been such a challenge but such a great experience too because if i didn't start on the yakima i wouldn't have gone and you know, I wouldn't have tried fishing for salmon on fly or I wouldn't have tried to go fish an urban river in Seattle for trout or, you know, you just, you just got to do it though. So um, yeah. maybe we can share that on uh, that picture on the young guides Instagram um, that we're just getting kicked off. So uh, make sure to give it, if you're listening to this, check it out, go to our, you know, on the Instagram and we'll kick you a follow back. So do you have any photos from that night? All I, all I have is that one photo that I know of. Yeah, we'll have to share that. And then uh, um, I think that's like the only, that was like the only memorable fish that we got that night. It was pretty cold. It you know, was. And I was. Catching a lot of little dinks. But I mean, I love, you know, back then I was like, oh, this is a little fish. But now I'm like, fish, let's go. <laughs> yeah, dude, for sure. Um so yeah, you, you told us kind of how you got started fishing, how you started hunting, how you got started guiding. Um, you earlier, I know you were talking about fish conservation, um, river, um, cleanups and stuff like that. I, I know that you were super involved in that. And I know that's a huge, huge part of our industry of, of fly fishing in general. Like I want to speak a little bit about on your involvement, um, with cleanups, conservation, how about it? Yeah. So, um, I did, uh, you know, once I started learning about fishing and I think that there's a lot of challenges our fisheries face, um, you know, not being trout, being salmon, being steelhead. I mean, heck, even like our lakes and stuff, there's always something, there's pollution, there's, um, challenges, there's over uh, predation. I didn't say that right, but you got the gist. Um, but once I, you know, I started getting into fishing, I realized, hey, if I want to keep doing this fishing, you know, there's come some, uh, I got to do some cleanups. I got to kind of learn about some science. I got to get out there and I got to get my hands dirty. And, uh, you know, especially growing up around Seattle, you know, we got a lot of urban rivers and creeks. Um, I, I mean, last winter, I'm down in a creek by my house pulling out tires. Um, I, I pulled probably... 12 to 16 tires out of the creek and that's like one of the big causes one of the chemicals in the tires causing to our coho and um a lot of our other salmon um you know i was just reading an article about it today uh i can't i don't know the name of the chemical off the top of my head it's like geez uh something six six but it's a preservative in the tires um and uh they're finding small amounts of that you know, are toxic to this coho specifically. Um, but I got involved, uh, you know, after like I uh, 
left college, I got involved with uh, T, you know, Trout Unlimited, and uh, we started doing uh, we started doing conservation work. My uh, local chapter is really big on conservation work around Lake Sammamish and the Lake Washington watershed. Uh, we do uh, kokanee restoration. Um, you should give it a, you know, give them a follow through your rivers on Instagram. Uh, they do a lot of uh, fun runs and um, just a lot of events to show you where the kokanee once were to where they weren't, you know, where they are now and how we're trying to benefit and help them and actually get a sustainable fishery. Um, I think a lot of misinformation out there shows that uh, we don't want to get a fishery started, but what we're trying to do is get a fishery so that we can enjoy kokanee and kokanee salmon for years to come. And hopefully my kids and your kids, Kyle. Um, but back to my side of conservation, I work a lot on uh, the Cedar River in Renton. Um, we do, uh, I do fish conserve, not really like fish conservation, but I do a lot of, I organize cleanups. I've done it for three years now, um, hopefully coming up on year four um, this next summer. Um, I absolutely love it. I mean, that river just, I car bumpers, fireworks, beer bottles, anything you can think of, I can guarantee I probably pulled it out of that river. Um, so you gotta love it. You gotta, you know, you gotta like doing it. Um, and I want to see places like that be pristine still, even though it's in a city setting, you know, you gotta, you gotta do something about it or else nothing's going to be in there. So, um, yeah, that's kind of my, uh, my background on conservation um and if i can recommend get get involved you know even if it's just you taking a wagon down to a creek and pulling tires and trash and uh you know trying to let people know about homeless camps nearby or people dumping oils or you know anything along that sort you got to do your part if you want even you know you don't think these little creeks these feeder creeks are important but these feeder creeks are what provide fresh water to these bigger creeks and these bigger rivers so um, that's kind of yeah that's my two cents on it still learning a lot still doing a lot uh, get involved for sure and, and don't let keaton be too modest here like keaton organizes like that was the first ever cedar river cleanup right that you started four years ago um they they did um here and there they're kind of spotty um, they did, you know, Creekside did a couple, um, and then they kind of, there was one or two, I, f I forget, there was a couple other that were done, uh, mostly Creekside did them, and then I just kind of picked them up and ran with it, and uh, we get a lot of, you know, support local fly shops, especially because a lot of these shops uh, are donating to these cleanups to give the people that come out and volunteer, um, you know, they give them prizes and stuff for helping me out and uh, I want to make sure that they get the same back because without them you know the cleanups wouldn't be what they are so um, but yeah that that's the first cleanup I've ever organized and now I'll be going on my fourth one that's pretty crazy to think about um, and I was when I first started I was 19 20 years old so age doesn't matter get out there you know there's going to be people that say it's a waste of time it's not worth this this isn't this one's already dead go do that no just go do it i mean you you nothing's going to be saved if you don't try to save it if you just say if you join the rest of the naysayers and they they just go oh that's dead we're just going to let it die it's going to die on you so for sure yeah that's really um, important especially cedar i mean that's like that's your fishery man that's the fishery you live by that's the one you know best that's like and it's by such a big urban center like yeah. you have such a great opportunity to teach people to educate people on these things and then to show off your your river man like like that's yeah. that that's that's your home water i love you know don't get me wrong i love the yakima i love um I love all these fisheries around us, but uh, when that summertime rolls around, I become a river rat on, on these urban rivers because there's just something about, you don't get the same, you're not going to be under 405 bridge catching trout. You know, you're not going to see these, these like the skate park, or you're not going to see like Washington or people kayaking, you know, just like in this urban setting, it's nitty gritty kind of, uh, grimy setting. I love it. Um, it's not pristine. So if you, you want, you know, you're looking for pristine, you know, you need to head out, go 
in the mountains, go somewhere else because this is not <laughs> going to be your cup of tea, but, uh, I love it. I mean, you know, if you do any of these urban rivers, you know, we got a lot around us. we got the green cedar cedars is summertime only. A lot of the creeks by us are summertime only. Um, but you can get out and you can, you know, you can find fish, but leave your cars empty because I mean, people get their stuff broken into and stuff, but yeah, man, I, it is my, I like to claim it as mine. You know, my, I, I love to fish it. I love to show people how to fish it. Um, it's like my, uh, if you watch that uh la carp guy kyle it's kind of like that um, but a lot worse you got to check it out everyone should go check it out vice la carp guy youtube he eats a carp out of the la river disgusting but i'm plugging him right now so gotcha yeah well, heck yeah dude it's good to, it's, it's like i i know you but and i've known you and we've talked a lot but it's cool hearing your story there's things i haven't heard that you shared that super cool man uh wow. So you got into guiding this, this year. Mm -hmm. Um, How about like, what did that process look like? Like what from talking to talk? Cause I know, okay. So I know that you, Keegan and I have been trying to talk you into guiding for a while, right? Yep. (laughs) Quite a while. We we've been trying to get you start guiding. So tell us, talk about your process for when Keegan and I were like, dude, brick and get your guidelines, start guiding for Todd to where you're at right now yeah um you know t- i talked to our you know our me our boss todd um, i got into it and i was like hey like i want to start guiding uh, i was working at the orbis store nearby and i'm kind of like yeah you know i'm down in the city i i want to beat the city and i want to get out and get over and start teaching people what i love and so i reached out to todd um, he's like, yeah, I'll give you a chance. This is what you need to do. And then the list began and you got to get, uh, you got to get your insurance. You got to get your business license. Um, you got to get all your gear, all your rods, uh, every, you know, fly shop might be different, but ours was, uh, we're pretty much a contractor to, uh, Ellensburg angler. Um, so it's a, it's not an easy process, just like anything that's involved with the state. It takes a little while. Um, it took me probably, I mean, what, I was telling you like the, it was a step forward, step back process. And, uh, I'd say probably four or five months. It took me Kyle. Yeah. Um, I think it it takes a while for sure. It takes a while, you know, getting into business, starting off. And like, uh, I was really nervous getting my own business started because there's a lot you got to learn. You got to save receipts. You got to, you know, do invoices. Um, and I mean, the list goes on. So I had all that to learn. Um, so, you know, as me and Kyle sit here and we're like, yeah, go guide and blow. But there's a, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot to um, take the steps to get to this point. So, you know, talking to Todd, get my license, get my business license, get my insurance. And then uh, there's a, you know, a couple months of getting on the sticks with guides and, you know, rowing a boat down the river. It's a lot different than fishing a boat down the river. Um, and that's the, the one thing that I really had to tune up and I'm still tuning it up, uh, to this day, um, oh just, head. just learning the spots and learning when, Hey, I need to slow down and I need to push here and I need to go here and I need to make sure uh, I'm doing this. And then, you know, the craziest thing for me was you, all the things that we're doing, you don't realize that you're, you know, the night before your guides are setting up the rods, they're getting their, everything set up. They're going to get your, uh, lunch for the next day. Um, they're making sure their boat's in good shape. Um, and then the next day they go, they got to make sure that you sign, <laughs> sign your, uh, uh, what do you call that? Waivers. Thank you. Your waivers space that, uh, but you, you gotta have your waiver sign and then you get out and fish and then, you know, you're, you're talking to people, you're teaching how to fish, your safety, your, you know, someone's gets hurt. You need to know how to help them. Uh, you're also, uh, you're an entertainer, you're the lunch, you're their hostess. And then at the end of the day, you know, um, just making sure that you're one, you know, fishing and then two, having, uh, I think what a lot of people underestimate is good conversation as a guide. Um, you know, if you're getting people on fish all day, but you're quiet, uh, it's not going to be enjoyable for them, you know? So that was a, that's a big learning curve. You're doing, you know, it's a juggling act doing seven things at once. And, uh, I mean, it, it definitely took me a couple trips to get it down, but once I, you know, I'm starting to get it down and I'm starting to learn and 
Uh, I love it. So you gotta, you gotta like watching people catch fish too. For sure. For sure. And, uh, yeah, dude, that process to get your license. I remember you calling me and texting me. I know you were talking to Todd or talking to Keegan, like to be a, uh, to be a guide in Washington, especially like as an independent, like the way that Ellensburg angler did it, like you have to go through the whole process. Cause you are a business owner. You are, um, a private contractor, you're, you need a business license through the state. You need guide insurance. You need CPR first aid. And then you apply for your guide license and then you get your guide license. It's like, it's a process. Um, and it's scary, man. I mean, you were, you're, you're 24, right? Yep. Yeah, so you're 24 and you own your own business and Good. your own taxes you're gonna do all this stuff you're your own guide like you're you like like it's scary man like we're young like I, I was the same way when i started i was 20 and it's like i just graduated high school and i own my own business like this is scary stuff dude yeah. like like being yeah. able to leap in and do this and but it, it's not just us you know like we you talk to me because i had experience but I talked to Keegan because Keegan had experience and Keegan talked to Stefan and Todd because they had experience. Like it's, it's the people that we've been able to work with through um, that have kind of helped. If you are, you're, yeah. you're, you're the Ellensburg angler baby. You're here. I'm the new, I'm the greenhorn. And uh, you know, two things uh, as scary as it is, as it is, it is also a really rewarding experience. You know, I don't want to make it seem like it's daunting, but it's not an easy task. But when you're doing it, it's a rewarding task, especially when things go right. It feels really good. Um, and then, you know, one tip I think that that I took to heart and uh, is you're running your, you know, you're the captain of your ship. You know, people are going to get on and people are going to have more experience. You know, you're going to get guys that are fishing for 40, 50 years, fly fishing since they could walk and uh, they, you know, in Montana and everywhere. And uh, it's, it's a daunting thing, but uh, you got to realize like, Hey, this is me. This, I, this is where I'm at. This is where I row. This is what I do. And uh, we're, we're going to run this program the way I want to run it. So um, I think that I've, my first couple of trips, you know, I had to have people like, Hey, we should do this, you know? And yeah, you want to listen to your clients, but at the same time, it's like, you know, if there's something that you're doing, you're, you're trying it, stick with it because eventually I've had days where I'm like, Oh, maybe I should change it up. But I've talked myself out of it and things connected, you know, in an hour because the sun came up or this happened or this happened, you know? So water warms up, day warms up, you know, changes and everything so uh just stay at it if you're gonna if you're looking at getting into this uh stay at it you know if you're gonna do it go full steam ahead don't don't go in it and then get your feet wet and back out like you gotta want it so um, that's kind of my tip as a as a new guy for sure and it, and it helps i know you're talking earlier about knowing people going out and meeting people you wouldn't be where you're at today if you hadn't talked to keegan and nope. Keegan wouldn't be where he was at today to give you this opportunity and me this opportunity if he hadn't talked to Mike, you know, like it, it, you got to go make contacts. Like you, yeah. you, you got to go meet people that opens up these opportunities. You got to be open to that. Just like anything. I mean, it's like any job networking's huge. Um, you never know where your next opportunity is. There's doors to be open. So um Uh, that's kind of it sounds cheesy it sounds like kind of an inspirational podcast right now but you know what this is uh, it is what it is and uh me and kyle we're very passionate about what we do so uh, we're here to encourage you to do what you want and to get after it Um, but also to show you that you know don't be afraid to make mistakes and uh and uh just really enjoy life a little bit so um, what do you what do you think about that kyle no, dude. I think that was a great intro on yourself. Yeah. I started in the outdoors, started guiding. Um, I think, me, yeah, go ahead. Let me finish uh, kind of on my, I talked a lot about fishing, um, hunting. I'm still, you know, I'm still getting into that. Um, I, even though I've been hunting since I was eight, you know, I'm, I'm still figuring that out. And as much as I want, I wish I had more time to do it. Um, 
you know, I'm not as experienced at hunting as I think Kyle is. And I think Kyle's going to have some great uh, details on that on these upcoming. But as I'm learning hunting too, just like anything, I'm going to share. I'm going to tell you, hey, I did this when I was out duck hunting or I'm deer hunting or I'm doing this and it worked or it failed. And uh, I hope I can, you know, in later episodes, we can kind of talk, you know, not all about fishing and fishing guides, but we're also getting a little bit of duck hunting, turkey hunting, deer hunting, you know, anything of that sort and just learn from our mistakes. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of, I know we're on the outro, but I just wanted to throw that in there um, because I didn't really talk about it too much. So for sure, for sure. Um, I think a great way to close out this episode on Keaton would be for a story from your most memorable guide trip so far. Yeah. Um, Ooh, I got, I got a couple good ones. And uh, I, I think my favorite trip, uh, man, there's, there's so many good trips, like all the clients I've taken out, I truly have to say it has been awesome. Um, but I think there was just one that was a, a buzzer beater was it wasn't a giant fish, but you know, we're ending our day winds picking up. It's getting, it's getting slow. It's getting cold. Uh, it's an October day. Uh, I'm rowing my, my boat and going down the river and uh, I'm like, okay, we're going to do some dry fly fishing. Cloud cover came in and I'm like, you know, we've been doing pretty good on nymphs all, all day today. So let's mix it up. Let's do something else. I want to get you that full experience. So he casts and we go about probably, I would say a half a mile on the river and it's just slow and the, the winds just tearing his fly line up. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, like this was one of my learning curves. I'm like, maybe I should, you know, in my head, I'm second guessing. And so we're coming up and I, I'm like, okay, we're going to cross the river. There's a nice little bucket coming up. It's kind of in this cove. I'm running a, a October caddis with a, uh, it's a, uh, rusty haze behind it it's kind of like a uh, copper haze uh, it's like a purple haze atoms but it's just in copper color it's size 12 right behind that october caddis and my i i don't know the fishing gods connected with his rod it laid out like a perfect cast dropped it right in and this fish just comes from the bottom ambitious grabs the fly comes out of the water takes it and just runs and i mean the thing was probably like 14 13 you know not a giant fish but i was we were pumped like my client was like all right you know we're like we're sitting there i mean we look like we sound like schoolgirls on the river we're out there screaming and having a good time and uh that those moments right there that's like yeah it wasn't like it wasn't that 25 inch you know brown or cutthroat or rainbow or whatever but you know what, I, I made a memory with my client and that's something that I'll never forget. And I think he'll never forget. So. Dude, that's a great story. Yeah. It's, I appreciate it. Yeah. It's moments <laughs> like that, dude, that make guiding worth it. Yeah. I got goosebumps from that. Like I, wow. I, that just, that, sh, that just, sh, that gets me so excited. I can't, I just, I don't know. It just gets me going. So, um, but yeah, uh, this has been awesome. I think, you know, it's a, uh, we're, we're new at it, but uh, we're getting it, you know, we're getting it figured out. And I think uh, I'm really excited to see what the young guides podcast, you know, where it takes us and what it could be. So. Like, yeah. Closing notes here for Keaton. One, where can we find you on social media? Yeah. Um, I do. Uh, you can find me on, uh, you can follow us Ellensburg Angler. Um, that'd be a big one. And then, uh, I have a little outdoor blog. Um, I've kind of been slow at it because I've been guiding, um, but you can follow me at big hoss outdoors, dot, uh, big hoss outdoors. Um, and I do, you know, I share fishing and hunting pictures or trail cam videos. Um, and if you have questions, just send me a DM. Like, even if, if you know me, if you don't know me, I am a very open person. I love to just talk about fishing. I like to talk about hunting. I may be slow on some days cause I get kind of busy, but, um, you know, if you got questions and you're a young person or you're like, Hey, I want to start guiding or, Hey, I want to start doing this. Um, yeah, just send me a message, you know, and I'll, I'll try to give you the best guidance I can. For sure. Um, I know your season's kind of winding up, right? Are you, are you going to be guiding anymore this fall or winter? 
Uh, for me, I'm, since I'm on the west side and a guy to, on the east side, that pass can get kind of brutal, especially with a boat. So <laughs> I'm uh, I'm finishing it up. Uh, probably this this weekend is going to be my last trip over on the the yak, and uh, I'm really excited. You know, we're going to go over, finish it up. I got a little work that needs to be done on my boat after this low water um, for yeah. the next season. <laughs> Kyle knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mile marker 18, baby. Rock garden. Rock gardens. Yeah. No, that place is in low water. It, it's, you know, you're, you're maneuvering. It's fun, but it's, uh, it's humbling. You got to make sure that you're on top of the sticks. So, um, but yeah, if you, uh, next spring, summer, uh, I should be out guiding in fall. So if you're looking to get out uh, with me or pretty much our whole guide staff is awesome. I mean, we got Todd, he's the owner. You got Stefan. You got Keegan, you got um, Alex. Um, I think that's all we got Ross. right now. We got five of us. Oh, and Ross. Yeah, Ross is a dude. Ross is my man. So, <laughs> check it out. Uh, you know, get out with us. Uh, if you're a new angler or you're an experienced angler, we'd love to have you. Uh, we'd love to chat with you. So, um, give us a call, you know, or uh, check us out on Instagram or ask questions. So, um, but yeah, that's where you can find me on uh, social media. And um, like I said, it's, it's been great. Heck yeah. Well, Keaton, appreciate hearing about you on the technically second episode of the Young Guides podcast. Um, one. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're number one, baby. You're number one. Um, next episode, I think we're going to go over my background, my... Yep. Um, I'm bringing in the outdoors industry. Um, but until then, Keegan, ah, Keaton. Oh, it's okay. I'm okay. just gonna put this out here. This is so hard because there is Keegan, who is our buddy and our another guide. There is yep. Keaton, mm -hmm. and then there's Kyle. We got three K names, and it's it's freaking hard to keep track of all these names sometimes. You just gotta say that guy. That guy, the guy with the neck beard. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I think, uh, like Kyle said, we're going to go over his uh, outdoor experience on the next podcast. And then uh, I'm just really excited. And I hope you guys are excited. And uh, this is another, uh, another episode of the Young Guides podcast. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, the next one. So uh, this is Keaton. And uh, this is Kyle. We'll catch you on the next one. Absolutely.